Hey guys, welcome back to Fix It Friday. So this week we're going to be going back to the original Sony PS1. Uh, this is an absolutely fantastic console, and I kind of missed this when I was growing up, and uh, it's been really nice to revisit this now, um, you know, in the modern age with my PS1 Digital and with my X Station. Uh, so for those of you guys that don't know, the X Station is an optical disc emulator for the PS1, and I think it's the best of the options that are available. Uh, it's really easy to use, and uh, it has... I think, perfect compatibility. I've never had a problem, at least, I can tell you that much. Um, so if you want to play PS1 games from an SD card on original hardware, this is, I think, the best way to go. However, uh, over the course of the last year or so, I can tell you I've gotten plenty of people who have reached out to me. They've tried to install this themselves, and something went wrong, and then uh, they reached out to me to see if I can fix the installation. So today what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over this particular X station. I got this from a friend and uh, things didn't work out with this one. So I'll show you how to diagnose these things and uh, get them working again. Thankfully, it's not too hard to do that. All right, let's get started. But first, let me take a couple of seconds to thank the sponsor of this video, PCBWay. PCBWay is my go-to option for PCP prototyping, and they also provide PCB assembly, high quality 3D printing, and even custom CNC machining. And now, PCBWay, in collaboration with Mauser Electronics, is hosting their fourth annual PCB design contest. You can choose to contribute to their IoT, robotics, or free theme categories. There's lots of great prizes, including cash and technology, so check out the link in the description below to learn more about how you can get your project submitted. So thanks again to PCBWay for sponsoring today's video. Okay, so I've got the motherboard taken out here and um, just going to go through some of the steps you can do to troubleshoot your X station if it's not working properly. So if the X station isn't working, it's usually one of three possible reasons. One reason is potentially that the wrong pins have been lifted here, or maybe uh, there's an issue with what you did uh, when you had to lift the eight pins on this particular chip. So the um, X station install guide is pretty clear about which pins you have to lift up. I'll put a link in the description for that. Um, but it's possible that sometimes people lift up extra pins that they don't intend to, or uh, sometimes they don't do a good job of cleaning the pads underneath, and so sometimes solder is bridging those pads. Um, usually this is not the issue, though, unless, unless someone really just kind of messed this up pretty badly. But it's easy to tell if that's what happened. You can use a magnifying glass, or you can use a microscope to carefully look at what happened at this chip, and um, it's also easy to fix. You know, like if there's pins that are lifted that are not supposed to, you can tack them back down, if there's a mess in this area, you can just generally clean it up. So as long as you didn't do anything to damage the chip itself, you know, it should be manageable. Okay, so the second place where there can be a problem is on this side of the board. And so this is the quick solder board. Um, sometimes what happens is that these pads are not making substantial contact with the logic board. Other times, there are pads that are very close to ground. And so people unintentionally bridge these, these little pads to ground. So thankfully... Um, Someone put out a link um, online that shows test pads where you can go point by point and make sure that each one of these uh, places is making a good connection onto the board. And so how do you tell that you're making a connection on the board? Well, you use a multimeter. So I've got this multimeter here, and I have it set to this setting right here, which is called continuity mode. It's usually depicted by these like sound waves. <laughs> and um, what happens with the continuity mode is that if you take the two leads, and you touch them to each other, you, you hear beep. And so basically, if you're anywhere on the board where there's continuity, like here, I'll just show you. Like here and here, there should be, if I can get a good, yep. So you see I'm on the same, the same track here, and so when I touch here and here, it beeps. So you can use this guide that I'll have linked in the description, and you can go point by point to test pads on the logic board, and each one of these points on the quick solder board, and as long as you hear a beep, you're fine. You can also test each one of these pads to ground, and you can test ground very easily just by touching like this region over here of the board. And if something is uh, making contact to ground, then you might have a short that you're not intending to have. Um, so this is actually my test rig. So I actually have a, a complete working X station test rig, and I use this so that I can easily rule out where the problem is. So if it's a problem with the X station, board itself, then this will not work. If it's a problem with the installation, then I can take an X station from a bad installation, pop it on here, and I'll get it to work. Um, so unfortunately, with, with this particular X station, the issue is, is actually the board itself. And so, um, so yeah, I was able to test that by just putting this 
into this rig and I'll show you in a minute what it's doing. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and boot this thing up and I'll just show you what this broken X station is doing. So to boot it up, we're gonna hold down this switch. This tells the PlayStation that the lid is closed and we're gonna go ahead and power it on. And so you can see right away that the X station is blinking this green light and that is not normal. It will do this if it thinks there is no SD card inserted. So um, it's gonna also fail to boot. It's gonna go straight to the memory card management screen. And so what this tells me is that the micro SD card slot is broken. Um, this is actually something that happens fairly common with the um, SD card extenders that people make. So sometimes people make those uh, extenders and they're very nice. They look very beautiful. They're very convenient. But the problem is, is that the, um, the micro SD part that goes into the X station is usually not beveled. And so what happens is that it puts a lot of mechanical stress on the card slot and it ends up breaking the card slot. And so I think that's exactly what happened here. However, thankfully this is not difficult to fix. All we're gonna do is desolder this and install a completely new card slot. And then we're gonna go ahead and bevel that SD card extender so that it never does this again. All right, so let's go ahead and get started with that. All right, so to remove this broken micro SD card slot, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to our old friend Chip Quick over here. <laughs> so I use this often on the channel. It's a godsend and it makes, you know, removing surface mount components super easy. Uh, so basically it's a low temperature solder that you can use um, and it basically just takes the existing solder and it makes it stay molten with low temperatures. And so basically you can heat up the entire component and then just simply lift it off um, once everything is all nice and molten. So this is the chip quick itself. So you gotta use this special flux that comes with it. And I'm gonna be using a finer tip for, uh, for this operation. So you basically just take this stuff and you can see it just stays molten at really low temps. And so I'm gonna start with these thicker ground pads. And then these pads here are the actual data lines for the SD card. And it's totally okay to be sloppy with this stuff because again, this is the card that is defective. We're gonna get rid of it. And I'm just trying to make sure that all of the points are covered with this solder. So now at this point, I have a hot air station and I have it set to about 350 Celsius. And I'm just heating up the component at, you know, not, not a very high, uh, speed of the, the the air it's coming in at a pretty low speed and it's at a lower temperature and so we're just going to heat up this whole thing until it becomes molten and it should just slide right off once uh, everything is ready to go Okay, now that that's all set, we're gonna go ahead and just take this solder braid here. We're gonna apply some regular no clean flux. And now we just need to clean up all these pads. And thankfully it's very easy to clean this stuff up. It just goes right into the solder braid and disappears pretty easily. It's messy though, so that part is kind of crappy and you're gonna have to spend some time cleaning this thing up, which is what I'm gonna do next. But, all right. So we've gotten all the chip quick off of the board. We've cleaned, you know, gotten all the original solder off, but uh, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and get some alcohol pads and just apply it to this area and get this whole area cleaned up again. Um, when I heated this up, it was actually interesting. The outer shell of the micro SD card came off. You can actually see the bent pins. So, you know, whatever happened here, it was pretty <laughs> catastrophic and these pins got totally totally wrecked and damaged there, yeah, there. So you can see that it just came right off. Um, so yeah, that's why it's really important to use a beveled micro SD card um, extender uh, so that you don't have problems like this. And you know, they usually don't come shipped that way, but it's super easy to bevel them. And I'm gonna show that to you later on in this video. All right, so I'm gonna clean this up and then we're gonna go ahead and install the new SD card. All right, so all that flux is cleaned off and now we're ready to go ahead and install the new micro SD card slot. So putting these in is actually not so bad. You can see that there's two holes here in the PCB. Those match up to these two little guide posts that are on the card. 
And I'll have a link in the description for where you can get these. You can get them pretty cheaply and easily from Amazon in like little packs of five. Uh, so that's what I normally do. So you just have to hold it down with one finger and then start by anchoring it down with those ground points. Um, it's kind of easy to burn yourself, so just be a little careful. You know, don't don't hold on to it for too long. Um, but yeah, we're just gonna try to anchor down these points here so that it stops moving. And make sure that these pins that you can see down here are nice and aligned. Um, might not be easy to see it on camera, but I can tell you that they are aligned. Okay. So now this thing is attached to the board. It's not going to move anywhere. So the final step we've got to do is to solder these little points here. They are kind of tiny. Um, you may want to use a microscope or some kind of magnification to make sure that you're doing a good job. And you also have to add a decent amount of flux so that these points don't bridge together. Um, and so I'm going to go, because I'm left-handed, I'm going to go from right to left and, uh, and do these one at a time. All right, so there we go. I'm just gonna angle it up a little bit so you can see they're all connected and they're not bridged to each other as well. So this should be a fully repaired X station. So now let's go ahead and plug this thing in and give it a quick test. All right, so I've got my tester unit partially reassembled here and I've got this newly repaired X station plugged in. Let's go ahead and power it on and see what happens. All right, so right away, you can tell something different is happening because we're not getting the green uh, flashing LED anymore on the X station. This is the correct kind of loading behavior. And there we go. Once you see this PlayStation screen, that usually means everything is fine and it loaded properly. Okay, awesome. So we're seeing the X station menu, we're seeing the card. So, so this X station is now fixed. All right, so let's go back and take a look at that SD card extender because that's the thing that was responsible for damaging this thing in the first place. Okay, so now that we have a working X station, let's turn our attention to this SD card extender because this is the thing that was responsible for messing up that X station in the first place. So I actually have two of them here. This is a fully assembled 3D printed one, and this is the one I got from my friend. And this is the exact same SD card extender in its original form that you can buy on Amazon. And so I'm gonna try my best to demonstrate this on camera. I don't know if it'll work, but um, this one here, you can see I've already beveled it. And here, this one on the left is the original that you get from Amazon or wherever. And so hopefully it's clear on camera that this is like a hard, like square edge. Like this is not rounded or angled. It's like a sharp right angle going from here to here to here. And so as a result, when you put this into the micro SD slot, you end up running the risk of bending the pins or um, just damaging them. Even if you don't do it right away, it might happen after a couple uses. Uh, for my friend, unfortunately, it was like the first time he used it and, and that was all it took to break that micro SD card slot. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is, I'm gonna go ahead and bevel this one here on camera. If you look at this one here, you can see that the edges are now rounded and angled. So this helps to minimize any damage to those pins when you insert this into the, into the card slot. So beveling is actually really, really easy. You don't need very much. All you really need is a metal file, like this one right here. And you just have to go at it at an angle, like a 45 degree angle like this. And you don't have to take off a lot of material, just a little bit. And you're just trying to get an angle to this tip instead of a sharp 90 degree angle. You want to be a little bit more careful on this side because here are the gold contacts that the um, extender makes with the actual cartridge slot. You don't want to wear those away. You just want to wear away the PCB and just soften up those edges so that they aren't 90 degree angles anymore. All right, there we go. So yeah, now this is beveled as well. Um, this also works for cartridges, like video games that are not properly beveled. You can do this to them yourself, and 
and um, make sure that they also don't harm your consoles. Uh, so, you know, it's a simple technique, very easy to do. I wish companies would just do it right off the bat, but it doesn't always happen. Um, but thankfully, it's really quite straightforward and easy to fix. All right, so this is beveled. Um, my SD card extender is beveled. So now let me go ahead and reassemble this all on my tester unit and make sure everything is working properly. Okay, so I've got the new SD card extender attached. I'm just going to show you how to fold all this together because it's a little bit of like retro gaming origami. <laughs> so what you want to do is you kind of pull this up and you want to bend this like so. And then with the SD card extender, you fold it under and then make one crease so that it's coming out like so. And then you just line it up to the posts. There's two posts right here. And then just fold this one up and over. And there we go. That's it. You don't have to do anything else. All right, so let's go ahead. I've got the uh, micro SD now in a full-sized card. Let's plug this thing in and give it a test and see what we get. All right, awesome, looking good. Let's go ahead and move up to the screen here. Awesome. So we've got our X station menu, so everything is looking good here. So I'm going to go ahead and update this X station to the latest firmware and then get this one back to my friend because it is fixed. All right, so that is it for this week's video. Um, if you like this kind of content, then definitely consider subscribing to the channel because I have videos out like this every week. Um, and so there's always something interesting going on. And if you guys have any consoles of your own that you want repaired or modified, or hell, if you're actually looking for X stations, I have a few of these available for sale right now too. So hit me up on oneuprestorations.com and I can help you guys out. All right. Thanks again for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.